PC recording done. We're live. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Cloud is up. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I ask that you please place all electronic devices to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, and welcome to the stated meeting of December 10th, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumble, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Every Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Aaron. Blessed and present. Borelli. Present and blessed. Brannon. Present. Cabrera. Present and very blessed. Shin. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Carnegie. Aki. Deutsch. Here. Dharma Diaz. Present. Ruben Diaz. Oh, I shall know the idea there. Present. Present. <laughs> Strum. Present. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Hello. Where Good from? afternoon. I'm present. Jonai. Present. Gradenchik. I'm here. Holden. Here. Holden. Here. Thank you. Kalos. We're here. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Myself. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Present. Perkins. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. 
Traeger. Here. Ulrich. I am here. Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Let's do section on the regular web. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you, we have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Ellie Cohen, our spiritual leader at the Crown Heights JCC, and also a very good friend right in the heart of my district in Crown Heights. Thank you. Hey, Combo, we shared a rabbi, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> no rabbi fighting. Cohen is all of our rabbis. Yes. So uh, I'm joining the meeting from my office here in Crown Heights, where the Hanukkah menorah is ready, right here, to be lit for the first night of Hanukkah. And I want to thank the majority leader, our dear council member, Lori Combo, and also our beloved speaker for this invitation and honoring our community on this eve of Hanukkah. I also have to single out, I'm sorry, everybody else, but I want to single out the members that represent Crown Heights, uh, council members Eugene, Amphrey Samuel, and... Carnegie. So uh, a special shout out to, to all of you. I also ask you to join me at the suggestion of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. I'm holding up here a charity box and I'm putting a quarter in as a symbolic gift to charity. And if you have your own charity box in your home or your office or wherever else you are, please join me in that important act. This was a suggestion of the Rebbe many years ago to another rabbi who was leading such an invocation. It's a Chabad custom that we sit and watch the lights of the menorah for a half an hour after we kindle them. And while we're watching them, one of our great Rebbe's taught, we must listen to the message of the Hanukkah lights. So what is the special message that these lights are gonna be telling us tonight? So from Proverbs, it says, for the light of God is the soul of man. These lights tell us that every single one of us has a soul inside whose job is to bring illumination and brightness into this world. Many have described these past months as a time of darkness, of loss, and of suffering. And indeed, many, we've felt this personally. But throughout, we've seen bright souls who have brought healing, comfort, and even joy to those around them. These Hanukkah lights tell us that every one of us can be a bright light, helping our neighbors with charity, with a kind word, and with a helping hand. The New York City Council has been the flame to kindle many of those candles by supporting initiatives by great organizations throughout the city. So let us pray that you, members of the City Council, be blessed with good health, with strength, and with wisdom to continue your important work. May you merit to see the success of your initiatives, and may we all see you shepherd this city to be safe and prosperous in this tumultuous time. May the Creator bless and keep our brave first responders and health workers as they defend and defend us and heal the vulnerable and the sick. May he bless our essential workers and all the volunteers at food pantries, social service programs, and other good works throughout the city. And we pray for the good health and good fortune of every single resident of New York City, from our seniors to our children, as we will quickly recover from this pandemic. And may the lights of the Hanukkah menorah usher in the redemption with Mashiach, a time of great light, when goodwill will triumph over evil, when good will triumph over evil, and where jealousy, war, sickness, and hatred will be abolished, and the world will be filled with the knowledge of God as the waters cover the ocean. Thank you so much, Rabbi Cohen. It's always an honor and a blessing to have you here for your very timely words. It's good to see everyone and I hope everyone is well. In my district, it is a pleasure to have Rabbi Cohen here today. Ever since I've known Rabbi Cohen, since the beginning of my tenure, I have admired his perseverance and unique ability to work with everyone in my diverse district. 
in addition to being ED of the Crown Heights JCC, which has a robust food pantry and an array of social services, I especially appreciate Rabbi Cohen's footprint in the work he is doing in building bridges with our unique and diverse communities, including, but not limited to the Hasidic community, the African American and the Caribbean American communities through Project Care and other initiatives. A little background now, Rabbi Cohen, born and educated in England, has been a resident of Crown Heights since 1973. He received rabbinical ordination in 1980 from the central Lubavitch Yeshiva in Brooklyn. Soon after their wedding, he and his wife worked for three years and founded an outreach social service program in San Francisco, California. Then for 18 years, he ran the Chabad in New York University, building a vibrant Jewish communal and religious life on the NYU campus and providing spiritual guidance to the students, faculty, and staff. After a couple of years at Yeshiva Administrator and Board Liaison, in 2009, Rabbi Cohen was selected as Executive Director of Crown Heights Jewish Community Council, where he has worked to further the council's mission of providing assistance to all of the residents of Crown Heights, including every ethnic group and creed, for the purpose of creating a more cohesive community and representing the Crown Heights neighborhood to the broader New York community. I wanna thank you so much for being here today. I wanna to thank you for the incredible work that you are doing in our community. I know many people that, uh, many of my colleagues that are here today also want to claim you, um, but at this time I will be claiming you and I make a motion to spread the invocation on full onto the record today. Thank you so much, Rabbi Cohen. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Now at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Council Member Mark, excuse me, now at this time, we would have the adoption of the minutes by Council Member Eric Ulrich. Madam Majority Leader. Yes. I believe Council Member Carnegie is going to be doing Oh, Council Member Carnegie has signed up. Okay, we will now have Council Member Carnegie to adopt the minutes. So I don't have that script, but I'd like to uh, spread the No, I'm not spreading the invocation. I'm adopting the minutes. Council Member Carnegie, uh, yes. would you like to make a motion that the minutes of the stated meetings of October 29th, 2020 and November 19th, 2020 be adopted as printed? I would love to do that. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that they adopted the, the minutes of October 2020, 29, and November 19th. And November 19th be, be adopted. Thank you, Council Member Carnegie. Madam Majority Leader, you can continue. Thank you so much, Council Member Carnegie. And if you could just give me one moment. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor? None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? M262, the certification of election of Dharma V. Diaz, 37th Council District, Brooklyn. Congratulations to Councilmember Diaz. And that uh, communication is received, ordered, printed, and filed. M263, Brooklyn Borough President Strategic Policy Statement. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M264 through M266, Commissioner of Election Appointments. Rules, privileges, and elections. Petitions and communications. M267, the resignation of Council Member Donovan J. Richards. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Land use call ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Very happy Thursday to you all. As always, I hope you and your families are safe and healthy. We are uh, sadly continuing to see an unfortunate surge in COVID-19 cases throughout our city. 
as we head into the winter and cold weeks ahead, I wanna note how important it is to continue adhering to what public experts call the core four, staying home if you're sick, wearing a mask, washing your hands and keeping six feet apart and uh, doing social distancing. New Yorkers have flattened the curve before and we have to do it again. We all know that it's tough, but it is, the alternative is tougher. We have the power to save lives by wearing a mask. We have lost too many New Yorkers to this devastating disease. As of yesterday, 24,411 New Yorkers have died from coronavirus and that includes probable deaths. This is more than a number. These are family members, loved ones, neighbors, parents, grandparents. This is our community and our city. I wanna also acknowledge as I always do a few of the folks we've lost from 9-11 related illnesses since we last met. We recently lost auxiliary officer Michael Dorian and officer Frank Rosado of the NYPD, as well as EMT Janelle Ford of Jamaica Hospital, and we are sending our deepest condolences to their families during this difficult time. Our city, New York City, will be forever grateful for their sacrifice and service to our city. I also want to acknowledge a major loss for our city since we last met. Mayor David Dinkins, our city's first black mayor and a man who fought for the most vulnerable in our city died on November 23rd. He was a model for so many who entered public service after him. He never stopped looking after those who needed him the most. He was a mentor to so many on how to serve with dignity and with commitment. He believed New York City could meet any challenge it faced, uh, it faced by working collectively. He talked about the gorgeous mosaic of our city. Our heart, my heart is with his family and loved ones. It is a major loss. Rest in peace and rest in power. David Dinkins. Today, New York City lost another, another beloved civic leader and a true bridge builder, Dr. Ahmed Jabbar, a Muslim activist who made our city stronger, died this morning. We all grieve with the Muslim and Arab community for this major loss, and we are grateful for his dedication to his community and to our city. I also want to take a moment, uh, I want to take a moment of silence to remember all the lives that we've lost as a result of coronavirus. Uh, officers Dorian Rosado, EMT Ford. Just, I don't know how to get into. Uh, Laura, you're not on mute. EMT Ford, Dr. Jabbar, and Mayor David Dinkins. If we could take a moment of silence. Thank you. I want to acknowledge the departure of two very important staff members here at the council. Uh, John Blasco has been with the council since 2014, first working for former council member Rosie Mendez, and then joining current council member Carlina Rivera's team before joining the community engagement division. John's tireless efforts here have helped communities all across New York City, and I am wishing you the best, John, on your next steps. Uh, and we are grateful for all the work that you have done here at the council. Thank you so much. We are also losing a core member of our team, Brianna Mulligan, who is the first deputy press secretary here in the speaker's office. Uh, Bree joined the speaker's office in 2017 uh, under speaker Mark Viverito and has been with the council since 2014, initially joining the office of council member uh, Paul Vallone. For the past few years, she has brought so much dedication to this role and the entire council has benefited from her work. So all of your years of service at the council are appreciated, Bree. We are excited for your next steps. We're proud of you. Thank you all for your, all of your hard work here at the council. I want to extend a special welcome to a newly elected council member, Dharma Diaz. Uh, we are so excited to have you here as a council member. Congratulations. Uh, we are excited to get to work with you, and I know how excited you are to get to work on behalf of your constituents. So you were doing that work before you were elected, so this is just an extension of that. So I want to congratulate you and welcome you to your first stated meeting of the City Council. Congratulations, Councilmember Diaz. Uh, yesterday was Councilmember Adrian Adams's birthday. Councilmember Adams, I would sing you happy birthday, but 
it would not sound great. And you are the real singer in the council. So I want to just wish you a, a happy birthday. And I hope you had a great day with Jay and with your family. And last but not least, as you heard from Rabbi Cohn, I want to wish uh, everyone a happy and healthy Hanukkah. Uh, I want to wish everyone a really beautiful celebration of the miracle of the Festival of Lights, which begins uh, tonight to all of our Jewish colleagues. Happy Hanukkah to all of uh, Jewish New Yorkers and, and Jews around the country and around the world. Happy Hanukkah. We hope you have a really beautiful celebration over the course of Hanukkah. And now on to our agenda. Out of the Land Use Committee, we'll be voting on the following five land use items. The Department of Sanitation, Queen Sanitation Garage 1. This is a, a site selection uh, to facilitate the relocation of a garage and salt shed to Council Member Costa Constantinides' district. HPD has committed to providing 100% affordable housing at the former site. The Special Flushing Waterfront District, a series of zoning actions which will facilitate the development of 1,700 units of housing and new commercial space on the Flushing Waterfront, in addition to new waterfront open space, a new recreation center, and over 3,000 jobs in Councilmember Peter Coos District. The Bedford Avenue Overlay Extension, a rezoning in Councilmember Antonio Reynoso's district, which will facilitate the development of a three-story mixed-use building with commercial and residential uses above. 803 Rockaway Avenue rezoning in Councilmember Inez Barron's district, which will facilitate the development of a new mixed-use building containing ground floor manufacturing and approximately 174 units of affordable housing, including 80 units for formerly homeless adults. A mansion restaurant sidewalk cafe amendment in Councilmember Kalos's district. Moving on to our legislative agenda, we'll be voting on two important resolutions that support the repeal of the walking while trans law, which is a state law. Both resolutions are sponsored by Councilmember Carlino Rivera. For too long, the trans community has been unjustly targeted by law enforcement. Walking while trans is not a crime and the state penal code should reflect that. Resolution 1444A calls on the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign a bill to, to allow violations of for any loitering for the purposes of engaging in prostitution offense to be sealed. This uh, law would apply retroactively if passed by the legislature and signed by the governor. The next resolution by Councilmember Rivera related to this is resolution 923, which would declare the council's support for Senate Bill 2243 and Assembly Bill 654, sponsored by Senator Hoyleman and Assemblymember Pollan, which repeals the law that we're talking about, also known as Penal Law Section 240.37, and often referred to as Walking While Trans Statute. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Chloe Rivera, Brenda McKinney, John Blasco, Smita Deshmukh, Andrea Vasquez, and Z Emanuel Halu. Our next bill is a housing and buildings bill, introduction number 2033A, sponsored by the chair of our housing and buildings committee, Councilmember Robert Cornegie, would permit the Department of Buildings to issue an interim certificate of occupancy to allow for the occupancy of a building before the final certificate of occupancy is issued. The bill would not apply to residential buildings with fewer than eight stories or four dwelling units, non-residential buildings with fewer than five stories, mixed use buildings with fewer than four dwelling units or parking structures. And I wanna thank Councilmember Cornegie uh, for this legislation. Uh, and I wanna thank the staff who worked on this, uh, Jean and Zilka uh, for her work on the bill. Introduction uh, number 1170A sponsored by Councilmember Richie Torres will prohibit the sale of biometric identifier information. It would also require certain commercial establishments such as retailers, restaurants, and entertainment venues to post signage notifying customers if they collect biometric identifier information. Financial institutions are exempt from the signage requirement as are businesses with security cameras that are not used for automated identification of individuals and do not share video footage except with law enforcement. This bill requires the city's chief privacy officer with the relevant agencies to conduct outreach and education to affected commercial establishments. And I wanna thank from the staff, Valkis Mirig, Leah Skirpiak, Noah Meixler, 
uh, Florentine Kabor, David Seitzer, and Rachel Cadero for their work on that bill. Next up, we're voting on a bill related to the issue of mold in public housing. We know that mold rem remains a chronic problem in NYCHA units, and we must do everything we can to alert tenants to their right to live in a mold-free environment. There are places and people to help them, and we are pleased that this bill promotes awareness of these resources. Introduction number 1911A, again, sponsored by Councilman Richie Torres, will require an office or agency designated by the mayor to distribute a pamphlet or other printed documents that contain information about the mold ombudsperson, uh, the mold ombudsperson's call center and how to make a complaint to the mold ombudsperson to every NYCHA tenant. The office would also be required to communicate this information to each tenant by telephone for tenants enrolled in electronic billing. The office can opt to send the information via email instead of distributing a paper copy. This legislation would also require the designated office to distribute such pamphlet to certain elected officials and community representatives and to hold a public briefing at least once a year to provide information about the, the mold ombudsperson. And I want to thank Audrey Son from the staff for her work on that bill. In 2015, uh, this council enacted the historic Fair Chance Act to ensure everyone has equal access to employment. The pandemic we are in has posed a public health and economic crisis. Uh, and right now, any barrier to employment is devastating. Individuals with criminal histories face significant barriers to stable employment. In an effort to strengthen employment protections, the council will vote to strengthen the Fair Chance Act, which again was enacted by the council in 2015. Introduction 1314A, sponsored by public advocate Jumani Williams by request of the mayor, would add unsealed violations and adjournments in contemplation of dismissal to the category of dis dispositions that may never be considered for the purpose of making employment related decisions. It would also extend the protections of the Fair Chance Act to current employees. This bill would also prohibit discrimination in licensing against applicants with convictions for violations even prior to sealing. And I wanna thank from the staff, Balkis Mirig, YM Diori, Nevin Singh, David Seitzer, and Rachel Cordero. Our final two bills are an effort to support the arts and cultural sector of our city. Very excited about these bills. The COVID-19 pandemic has had devastating effects on this sector. It has brought on closures, restrictions, and the canceling of uh, so much programming that our arts community does in our city. The arts are integral to the health of our city and they are hurting so much. These bills give them a chance to survive, much like we did with open streets and outdoor dining. They will also enliven our streets and bring uh, so much joy to New Yorkers, and we could use more joy during this difficult time. I wanna thank Majority Leader Cumbo and the Chair of our Cultural Affairs Committee, Councilmember Van Bramer, for their commitment to arts and culture. Introduction 2034A, sponsored by Majority Leader Cumbo, will require the creation of a website that would provide information on open spaces designated by the city for arts and cultural programming, such as roadways, parks, or pedestrian plazas. It would facilitate the use of such space by arts and cultural institutions by allowing users to search for open space on a map, as well as providing information on other arts and cultural events in the city, either hosted by an arts or cultural institution or outdoor events held on private property. The next bill introduction number 2068A, sponsored by the Chair of our Cultural Affairs Committee, Councilmember Van Bramer, would require the city to create an open culture program that would allow eligible arts and cultural institutions or cultural venues to use approved public street space for artistic or cultural events. This program would be similar to the concept of the, of the uh, it would be similar to the concept of open restaurants, uh, our outdoor dining program that was launched earlier this year. It would, there would be an application fee of $20 for participation in the program to cover some costs and discourage frivolous applications, but participation in the program would otherwise be free. The Department of Transportation will be required to share a list of spaces for the program by February 1st, 2021, in just a few months, and the Mayor's Office of Citywide Event Coordination and Management, which houses the city's permit office, would establish the Open Culture Program 
by March 1st, 2021, the program will remain in effect until October 31st, 2021, with the possibility of extension, but it would expire by March 31st, 2022. Uh, these bills were complicated. They took a long time. The staff worked really hard on them, as well as the members. And I want to thank from the staff, Brenda McKinney, Christy Dwyer, Andrea Vasquez, Smita Deshmukh, and Z. Emanuel Halu. That concludes today's legislative agenda. I now turn it back over to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. At this time, we will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Ku, Van Bramer, and Menchaca. Ku, Van Bramer, and Menchaca. Okay, we will begin with Council Member Ku. Thank you. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker. Today, we are voting on the special flushing water fund in my district. This vote comes after decades of planning and proposals, starts and stops, meetings and hearings. And I'm very happy that the applicants and labor groups were able to arrive at an agreement that will include good paying jobs, good paying local jobs for the fishing community. On a grander scale, we have a commitment to an economic shot in the arm for fishing and the city at a time when we need it most. We are getting a commitment from the development team with long-standing ties to our community who will finally connect downtown fishing to its waterfront via an expanded promenade with playgrounds, pedestrian trails, and open spaces. We are getting 30% affordable housing on the rezone portion of the site on site four. Importantly, the applicants have entered into an agreement with the city to further engage in discussions over the next three years with HPD and the council to work on ways to secure financing so we can maximize the amount of affordable housing on site. This is critical because we all know the pandemic has caused cuts across the board. So it was necessary to look to the future when we are not so set back by budget cuts, where we can work on securing funding for more affordability. To name some benefits, we are getting a, a commitment to sustainable sewage infrastructure that won't contribute CSO to the fashion creed and the commitment I'm shoreline stabilization that goes beyond the required first zone sustainability measures. We also have commitments to direct waterfront assets, education and programming. We are getting workforce agreements with the Queen's Chamber of Commerce and the Fashion Business Improvement District. They will focus on hiring from both of our larger developments at Plan Houses and Latima Gardens, as well as $2 million to support small businesses impacted by the development over the next 10 years. We are getting new, we are getting new community facility spaces, including a new set, set aside for youth mentoring and senior recreational space for La Jornada Food Pantry. This is in addition to numerous financial contributions and equipment donations to help support the pantry's mission. And most importantly, at a time when the city of New York is struggling financially, we are getting a commitment to good paying jobs with 32 BJ and HTC, as well as thousands of temporary jobs and estimated $160 million in property tax revenues. This kind of economic development can help New Yorkers get back on the feet. I would, I would like to thank Speaker Johnson, Chairs Moyer and Salamanca, Wajuman, Jason Goldman, 
Ebony Mead, Anthony Paris, and Genevieve Michael, Amy Neverton, John Douglas, Arthur Hu, Julie Lubin, and the entire land use division. I would also like to thank the Waterfront Alliance, Grand Houses, Latimer Gardens, Maldonado Food Pantry, City Pass Foundation, Queen's Chamber of Commerce, the Fashion Business Improvement District, 32BJ, HTC, and all the other groups who were engaged throughout this process. And also my own staff, especially Lane Chong and Scott Sieber. I would especially like to thank the applicants and the labor unions who came together despite a lot of inf misinformation from those who would prefer nothing but build here, for those who would prefer nothing to be built here at all. We have all struggled in this pandemic and this isn't perfect, but we simply cannot afford to continue our demands for the perfect we cannot simply continue, we cannot simply afford to continue our demands for the perfect win out of over the good. This is a good compromise that will address many of the issues we heard from many public hearings to provide good paying, good paying union jobs, affordable housing, and a host of other community benefits. I encourage all of you, my colleagues, to vote in favor of this project. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker and Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Ku. We'll now hear from Council Member Van Bramer, followed by Council Member Menchaca. Time begins. Thank you very much. I'm going to shift gears and talk about open culture a little bit. Uh, intro 2068A, which I'm uh, very proud to be the prime sponsor of, is a not only a cultural bill, it's a small business. Uh, bill, it's a job creation bill. It creates for the first time a one-stop shop for expedited permits uh, for cultural organizations, individual artists, and other performing arts venues. And most importantly, right. the performances will be able to be ticketed events, and these organizations and artists will be able to charge for the performances. It is incredibly important that we allow artists to be paid for the work that they create uh, and they perform. Uh, the New York City Open Streets program will be a source of dancing and singing, uh, comedy and performance. And uh, other locations will be able to be chosen by artists and arts organizations in consultation with their local council member. All of the DCLA uh, recipients uh, are five borough arts councils and all the individual artists who receive grants through the arts councils uh, as well as other organizations like comedy clubs can access and participate in the program as long as they have a sponsor uh, among those 2000 arts organizations and individual artists. This is incredibly important. We've lost hundreds of thousands of jobs. Artists have been struggling to pay the rent and stay in New York City. This is the first time that we are doing something for artists, for the cultural community, for all of those small theaters, all of those small performing arts venues that simply shut down in March and haven't been able to produce, and the artists who haven't been able to be paid for the art that they want to create and share with the world. So starting March 1st, we will see art, dance, music, performance, break out all over the city of New York, democratizing art, making sure that we're making better use of city streets, and most importantly, putting artists back to work. I'm enormously proud of this bill. I wanna thank uh, the speaker, Jason Goldman, my staff, uh, Jack Bernadovitz. This is his first piece of legislation that he's seen through to uh, completion. My chief of staff, Matt Wallace, uh, our council, Brenda McKinney, who worked really hard on this, uh, Christy Dwyer, Alia Ali, uh, and all of those artists and all of those advocacy organizations for the arts who pushed for this open culture program to happen. Uh, there is more to be done. This is just the beginning, but artists and art organizations, you are seen, you are heard, we support you. And I can't wait for open culture to be a reality in New York City. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Council Member Van Bramer. It's been an honor to work with you on this legislation. At this time, I'd like to call on Council Member Carlos Menchaca. Time begins. Thank you, Majority Leader. The Flushing rezoning 
has falsely been presented today as a boost to the local economy and affordable housing. It is not. Spending 10 years on a bad plan doesn't make it a good plan. COVID has changed everything. At a time and place of extreme need, this body, our city council, will be and continuing to approve developments that help the rich at the great expense of our working families. It is egregious to argue that this rezoning is for the people of Flushing when the community and advocates are saying the contrary. And up until a few days ago, a couple of unions were against it and standing in solidarity with the people. Well, congrats to them. In a neighborhood with the highest overcrowding rate in the city, this rezoning promises 1,700 new apartments, only 3% of which will be affordable. That is a tenth of what would be required in MIH. This mayor promises to create new affordable housing programs around this project in the future. Well, good luck taking that to any bank with public trust. The community of Flushing is already severely rent burdened. In a majority low and moderate income neighborhood, majority immigrant, thousands of whom are seniors, exacerbating the rent burden means creating a housing crisis and displacement. This morning, we just sat down with advocates on Stabilizing NYC, where we're trying to fund programs to support people that we're about to be displacing in the future. Equally important, New York City's waterfront should be publicly accessible. This rezoning will result in a, in a privately managed waterfront with limited public access. The City Planning Commission, to no surprise, also failed to conduct an adequate environmental review and has disregarded community input. The environmental factor is crucial to the community of Flushing. Flushing Creek has one of the worst combined sewer overflow problems in New York City. And the arrival of thousands of new residents will undoubtedly exacerbate this unjust environmental burden. Nonetheless, I understand that unemployment crisis facing our city and empathize with those to see this proposal as an opportunity to get back to work. But it is a terrible deal that promises a short-term win for some while creating a long-term crisis for an existing community. The promise of good jobs is important, yes, but it is and cannot be justified while threatening the homes of thousands of people barely hanging on to their communities today. The residents of development that serves them, that creates desperately needed stability and opportunity within our communities. And that goes through a legitimate environmental review process. I will be voting no, and I will be asking my colleagues to join. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Carlos Menchaca. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members registered to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Barron. Time begins. Uh, thank you very much. I want to echo the comments made by my colleague, Council Member Menchaca, and to say if you look at the design, of the project, you will see that that waterfront area is in fact uh, reserved for those who are in those apartments that are at market rate and above. So in addition to those things that were mentioned, we now have another barrier for those who are low income, which I believe is the majority of that uh, district to be able to have immediate view and access of that. But I did want to speak in terms of my project, 803 Rockaway Avenue. It is a project that is being uh, constructed with light manufacturing on the ground level and apartment spaces above. I'm very pleased about this. It's also very significant to me because it faces a public school and it is a public school where I was a teacher for a dozen or so years and where I also served as the assistant principal. So I'm very familiar with the area, the community, the residents that are there. This project will have 174 units and you know what I'm gonna talk about, affordable to the people who live in the community. And you may want to know what is that area in median income for the neighborhood? It's about $38,000. So I'm not supporting projects that are not affordable to the people who live there because that would be contributing to gentrification and displacing those people. So 35 of the units will be at 27% AMI. 28% of the units will be at 40% AMI. 10% of the units at 50% AMI. 
and 13% at 70% of the AMI. There will be no units higher than 70% of the AMI. This development will have, as I said, uh, light manufacturing on the ground floor level. And above that will be an outdoor space for the residents to be able to enjoy the outdoors in an area where they can look out and see what their children are doing or just relax themselves. It also includes 2,500 square feet of community facility space. And the light manufacturing that is there that will be offered to small businesses will be offered at prices that are at least 20% below market rate. So we're talking about making this accessible to the people who actually live in the community. Uh, there will be the population that is invited to participate in this are veterans, seniors, those who are in need of support services, and those who were formerly homeless. We know we're in a pandemic. We know everyone has needs, but certainly this is a population that has extreme needs. And this is a project that will address those needs of those people. So I urge all of my colleagues to vote in favor of this project. I wanna thank all of those in land use and all of those on the speaker's staff and my own staff that worked on getting this project to this point. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Barron. And we will now hear from Council Member Cornegie. Time begins. Uh, thank you. I want to speak on my, my bill intro 20, 2033, which would allow the Department of Buildings to ensure interim certificates of occupancy before all the work in the building is completed. If work is nearly completed on a building and only a few units are still under construction, this should not prevent finished apartments from being safely occupied. We need more housing in New York, and this is a common sense way to create housing with apartments that are already complete. This removes a technical hurdle that will help New Yorkers find a home. The DOB issues certificates of occupancy before a building can be legally occupied. Where a certificate of occupancy cannot be issued because there are outstanding concerns, DOB will issue a temporary certificate of occupancy. This temporary certificate of occupancy, which is valid for 90 days, indicates that the property is safe for occupancy, but the outstanding concerns preventing the issuance of a final certificate of occupancy have not been resolved. After 90 days, DOB must inspect the property before a new temporary certificate of occupancy can be issued. As a result, DOB is required to repeatedly inspect properties with temporary certificates of occupancy, placing a large administrative burden on an already overworked agency. Proposed intro 2033A would allow DOB to issue interim certificates of occupancy before all the work in the building is completed, allowing safe occupancy of specific floors, reducing the need for repeated inspections before the final certificate of occupancy can be issued. This bill does not apply to residential buildings with fewer than eight stories or four dwellings, non-residential buildings with fewer than five stories, mixed use buildings with fewer than four dwellings or parking structures. This bill also requires that temporary certificates of occupancy, including interim certificates of occupancy, be posted in buildings. These temporary and interim certificates of occupancy can be revoked if they are, were issued in error or based on incorrect information. Overall, this bill creates a pragmatic way for DOB and the private sector to allow for units that are safe to be occupied while removing the burden of unnecessary repeated inspections. Thank you so much for everybody on the staff who's worked on this bill. Uh, I appreciate it. I hope all of my colleagues will sign on. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. At this time, I would just like to say I recognize that everyone has uh, very interesting um, and important land use decisions that they have to make in their districts on an everyday basis. Um, everyone's district is very different. Land values are very different. Uh, the complexities of everyone's district is very different. And whether it's Industry City and Councilmember Carlos Menchaca's district, or it's in Flushing and Councilmember Ku's district, you both know your districts well, you know them best, you were voted by an overwhelming majority of the individuals in your district to make the best decisions for your district. And so I congratulate everyone here, particularly Councilmember Barron as well, who's been able to uh, produce extraordinary affordable housing um, in her community. So with that, I would then like to go on to the report of special committees. None. 
Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, intro 1314A, prohibiting discrimination based on arrest or criminal record. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, intro 1170A, biometric identifier technology. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations, intros 2034A and 2068A, outdoor and open space for cultural events. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, intro 2033A, certificates of occupancy. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 691 and Reso 1501, Queen's Sanitation Garage 1. Coupled on general orders. LU 694 and Reso 1502 and LU 695 and Reso 1503, Special Flushing Waterfront District. Coupled on general orders. LU 696 through 698, Coney Island Avenue rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 699 and Reso 1504, Bedford Avenue overlay. Coupled on general orders. LU 700 and Reso 1505 and LU 701 and Reso 1506, 803 Rockaway Avenue rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 702 and Reso 1507, Mansion Restaurant. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Housing, intro 1911A, NYCHA Mold Ombudsperson. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, pre-considered Reso 1497, Council Committee changes. Couple the general orders and at this time I'm asking for a clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general order calendar. Okay. Council member Adams. Aye. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Um, I just wanted to quick, I just wanted to quickly say thank you to everyone um, to all of my colleagues who expressed um, words of comfort and condolences on the pass of my, passing of my mother, Ernestine Turner, who died after um, uh, in a, a battle, a short battle with an aggressive cancer. And so I just wanna say thank you so much for um, keeping me in your prayers. This is a difficult journey, um, but again, thank you. And I just wanted to also say congratulations to Councilwoman Diaz and happy birthday to Councilwoman um, Adrian Adams. And with that, I vote aye on all. Councilman Avery Samuel, Samuel, your mother was just uh, such a bright light. Uh, Ernestine was, every time you were around her, you felt what a special human being in person she was. And uh, I have such a great memory of uh, not this past summer, but the summer before marching in the Brooklyn Pride Parade with her after she had finished up some of her treatments when she was pretty sick and uh, what a wonderful time she had. And I just remember her going to every campaign event you had, every, coming to City Hall all the time and beaming with such pride and joy over uh, you and your amazing brother as well. So, um, you know, it's such a tremendous loss. And I know that when we lose a close loved one, uh, people reach out, you know, immediately when it happens. But I want you to know that we are here for you, not just in the immediate aftermath, but always, um, because we know it leaves a devastating hole uh, in your heart and in your life. And so uh, I was so grateful to get to know your amazing mother. And uh, we are really thinking of you and praying for you and your family. And I'm glad you mentioned her today, of course. Thank you. And I applaud you for being here today and for continuing with your hearings, continuing with the work. It's an honor to see your strength and for you to be here to continue the work of the people. Thank you. Ayala. Um, permission to explain my vote? Time begins. Um, very quickly, just wanna, say, I just wanna say how much we love Alita. You know, um, this is a sisterhood that we have at the city council. And I just, I, you know, I love you so much and thank you you know, um, all of my thoughts and prayers. Um, I wanted to wish uh, Council Member Adams a uh, belated happy birthday, and I wanted to congratulate Council Member Diaz um, and welcome her and to this dysfunctional sisterhood that we have uh, that's full of much love and appreciation and um, looking forward to, to working with you all. And I, with that, I vote aye. Thank you.
Darren. Uh, yes, I vote aye on all with the exception of the Flushing Waterfront Project. I don't have the numbers and the accompanying resolutions and the Coney Island rezoning. Uh, I don't, again, have the numbers. Of it. I think those are 9696, 697, 698 in the accompanying resolutions. And uh, I echo the comments of the speaker for my colleague who is going through her healing process. And I just want to say in terms of David Dinkins, I also want to comment on his loss. He was a great person, a gentleman in all respects. And when I was a principal, he took the time out of his busy schedule to come from Manhattan to be a guest speaker in my school at a, an assembly program where my focus was on reading comprehension. And so I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bor Borelli. Uh, thank you. I'd like to echo the words both of congratulations and, and of condolences that the speaker laid out prior. Uh, and I'd also like to vote aye on all uh, except intros 1314 and resos uh, 0923 and 1444. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brennan. I vote aye on all. Cabrera. Councilmember Cabrera, you might be on mute. We'll come back to Councilmember Cabrera. Sure. Uh, Cohen. How about I? Constantinidis. I'd like to wish all of my colleagues a very happy Hanukkah for those who are celebrating. I vote aye on all with the exception of the Flushing uh, Waterfront Special District, which is uh, LU 694 and 695, with the accompanying resos 1502 and 1503, in which I will be voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carnegie. Uh, can I explain my vote, please? Permission granted. So I just want to say to Alika, I didn't get a chance to know your, your mother very well, but I do know that you can judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. So it's been a pleasure to work with you and I can see your mother and her uh, sewing into you uh, all over your work. So it's, 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 it's a pleasure to know her through you. Um, I wanna congratulate all of my colleagues on great legislation passed today, but especially Carlina Rivera on, on, on her, her bills and resolutions. I think it's important to always keep in mind those are who, who are uh, tremendously underserved and who are under um, tremendous pressure to, of violence just for being who they are. A special happy birthday to uh, my homegirl, Adrian Adams. Um, and we know why we say that, Adrian. Um, uh, and I definitely want to welcome Dama Diaz, which I feel like I don't know how to welcome her. We, we stood shoulder to shoulder throughout this pandemic in our respective communities working side by side uh, to make sure that our communities are taken care of both with food and PPE. So uh, welcome, Dharma. I mean, you know, we spent so much time together, but um, it's great to see you in this capacity. And I look forward to working with you and, and sharing any information or insight that I may have. Uh, please feel free to use me as a resource. Um, and with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Councilmember Deutsch. Uh, thank you. Um... I vote aye in all, uh, except for Reso 144A uh, and Reso 923. And I want to congratulate Councilmember Dama Diaz. And I also want to wish all my Jewish colleagues a happy Hanukkah. May the light of uh, the menorah shine upon all of us. Thank you, and happy Hanukkah to you. Thank you, Majority Leah. You're welcome. Councilmember Dharma Diaz. Sorry about that. I am all, and I want to thank you all for welcoming me aboard. Looking forward to collaborating with you all. Thank welcome. you, Councilmember. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Ruben Diaz. 
Thank you. I am voting yes on all except resolution 923 and 1444. And with that, I want to wish all of you a happy Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Diaz. <clears throat> Drum. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Let me start off by expressing my condolences to Alika Amphrey Samuel as well. Uh, I also want to congratulate Carlina Rivera, Councilmember Rivera, for taking the lead on the Walking Wild Trains. Many of you know that I was arrested when I was 16 years old and charged with prostitution, uh, something that has gone on as a tool to use against the LGBT community for many, many years. And it's about time that we ended it. And so I'm very glad to see this passing today. I also want to offer congratulations to my colleague, Peter Ku, a man of color, thrice elected to the uh, city council. He knows his district best. I think the majority leader said that. And uh, when I was making this decision, I took into consideration the article by uh, council members Van Bremer and Menchaca in support of member deference. Uh, and I really agree that uh, you know member deference is important, especially when you've been elected three times to the city council. Peter Ku knows his district, and um, and that article I think uh, really uh, played uh, had a big impact on me. So thank you to those council members as well. And I think that ultimately um, we wound up with a very good deal, and uh, one that both of uh, the unions, the HTC and 32 BJ, can support. So therefore, I am voting aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Drum. Eugene. Uh, I want to extend uh, my sympathy to Councilmember Alika. And I wish that, and I know that God will give you the strength that you need to overcome this very difficult moment because we know the importance of mothers, not thinking in place, mothers. May God bless you and your family. And I want also to wish uh, to Council Member uh, Adam also happy birthday. This is a wonderful moment for you. We know how we enjoy our birthday. God bless you. All the best and all success to you and blessing to you and your family and to all our friends and colleagues from the Jewish community and also colleagues from the city council. Happy Anuka. Have a safe, and happy Anika to all of you and to the, to the new DS, the new DS council member, Dama Diaz, congratulations. It will be a great pleasure for me to work together with you for the good city of New York. And with that, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Thank you, council member Eugene. You're very welcome. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, Speaker, my colleagues, and everyone who's joined us today. I want to join with all of you in recognizing uh, our sister, Council Member Alika Amphrey Samuel. We continue to lift you up um, to you and your family on the loss of your beloved queen. You know, we are always here for you and your family. I want to wish uh, Council Member Adrian Adams a happy belated birthday. We had a wonderful surprise birthday celebration for our sister yesterday, um, and we love you. Uh, we, the Women's Caucus, want to join with the council in recognizing our newest member and sister from Brooklyn, Council Member Dharma Diaz. Congratulations, and we look forward to working with you. Um, happy holidays to each and every one of you. Happy Hanukkah to my colleagues who are celebrating and observing this important holiday. And I want to just explain my vote on two pieces of, of bills before today. Agenda. Council Member Carlina Rivera, thank you for leading the effort. Chair Helen Rosenthal, the Women's Caucus, the BLAC, thank you so much for your work supporting state legislation, recognizing that we have to support the Walking Wild Trans ban and repealing that. It is an archaic law that unjustly targets and punishes Black, Latinx, and immigrant trans women throughout our city. Too many trans women and men have been assaulted and this law is archaic and we must repeal it. So I wanna thank you all for your work and the, the Walking Wild Trans Ban Coalition for all of their help as well. And then I also wanna congratulate everyone 
who has bills on today's agenda. Thank you for all of the work you've done. Council Member Peter Koo, I know that rezoning was not easy for you um, in downtown Flushing. Uh, I do recognize we did come to an agreement with Hotel Trades and 32BJ, but I do wanna express concern as we move forward that we have to keep pushing the needle. We need to make sure that there is a conversation and a mindset that as we promote good jobs, we have to promote affordable housing. They go hand in hand, and we simply have to keep pushing to make sure that these projects work in the best interest of everyone, especially the local community. So with that, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah. I vote aye on all of today's agenda items. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Joan, I uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Majority Leader. You, Majority Leader. Let me Thank first you. begin by extending my condolences to Alika on the loss of a loved one. Um, you learn to live with the losses. You better get over them. Uh, and my prayers are with you and your family during this difficult time. Uh, Adrian, happy birthday. Many, many more healthy, happy, wonderful birthdays. Thank and to our newest colleague, uh, Dama Diaz, congratulations. Looking forward to working very closely with you. We have a lot of work ahead of us. So you're going to hit. We're teaching you how to swim the hard way. You're being thrown into the pool. And there you go. Uh, to my to those that are celebrating Hanukkah, I wish you all the blessings of this holiday season. And may the light continue to shine on you. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilmember Jonai. Gordenchik. Uh, thank you. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, thank you. Uh, first, I want to join my colleagues in uh, offering condolences to Councilmember Amprey Samuel. Uh, Councilwoman, I lost my mother almost 10 years ago, and I speak to her every day, and I can promise you that your mom will never leave you. She will never leave you. Um, I also um, want to uh, wish everybody a happy and safe Hanukkah. Um, I want to welcome our newest colleague, Dharma Diaz, and uh, hope that you have a wonderful time here at the Council and that I know you will do great things for your community. Uh, I wanna speak about the Flushing rezoning. I wanna congratulate council member Peter Koo, the land use staff, uh, everybody that was involved in bringing this across the finish line. Uh, I know that these things often come down to the wire. And as I said yesterday at the zoning and franchise subcommittee, uh, I grew up on the edge of Flushing. I've spent um, much of my life watching the transformation of Flushing um, from what was a dangerous community and a, a community with burned out stores on Main Street seems inconceivable now uh, to one of the leading lights in New York City. Um, the waterfront, though, has remained uh, shut off from the public uh, in my lifetime and probably in the lifetime of anybody who's alive in the city of New York. This is going to open up the waterfront. It's going to make a beautiful promenade there and it will function as a New York City park. It's also going to bring parkland which hasn't really been discussed enough, but Councilman Koo knows his district and he knows that there's only one small little park in downtown Flushing next to Bland Houses, and it really isn't much of a park. Um, this will bring a modern playground for the children, um, and the closest large-scale development next to that is Bland Houses, so I'm excited about that. As I said yesterday, I used to walk across the Roosevelt Avenue Bridge to Shea Stadium to watch the Mets usually lose, but... Um, but I didn't want to pay the extra fare because I lived in a two fare zone uh, growing up in Pominock houses. So I want to congratulate you, P Peter, for your stick to itiveness. I know that this is not a perfect plan, but uh, in all my years in government and in the 60 years plus I've spent on this plan, I have not seen a perfect plan. Perfection exists only in nature. So uh, with that, I vote aye on all. And again, a happy and a safe Hanukkah to all who are celebrating. May the light shine upon all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Holden. Congratulations to my Brooklyn district neighbor, council member Dharma Diaz. Welcome. And I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1314A. And happy holidays, everyone. Happy birthday, Adrian. Yo, Adrian. <laughs> Yo, Adrian. <laughs> Caleb. And all. Cool. Majority Leader, may I explain my vote? Permission granted. I begin. Thank you. So, first, I want to uh, 
echo our condolences to Council Member M. Samuel for her loss of her mother. You know, we all have mothers. You know, I, lost, I lost my mother two years ago. Uh, up to now, uh, I still have very fond memories for her uh, in my mind, you know, always. So I understand your sadness and I hope you will go get over it. And happy belated birthday uh, to our Queen's uh, BAC Chair Adrian Adams, and also welcome to Council Member Dama Diaz. Um, we have to work together uh, for the next year. And I want to say something um, about uh, Council Member Manchaku. I think he said something like the waterfront is closed. The waterfront is open to the public and abide by the same rules where any other city park would abide by. So Council Member Manchaga, please you know, say something that's correct. Don't say something if you have no idea what you're talking about. Thank you for your input though, okay? And happy Hanukkah, happy Merry Christmas to all our members. And I will eye on all. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Koo. Hmm. Yeah. Kozlowitz. May I explain my vote? Permission granted. I've lived in, I've lived in Queens 50, I've lived in Queens 58 years, not too far from the Flushing area that we are voting on today. And let me tell you, that has been an eyesore for as long as I'm living here and I'm sure before. I can't understand why people will vote against this project that a community wants, the community board voted for it. It is just beyond my belief that when it comes to voting for something that a community wants, where are we to say no? And with that, I just wanna say that I am so happy that this is happening. Peter, you have worked so hard on this. I know you called me, you were so nervous about this. And I am so happy that you are getting what you want, that the community of Flushing is getting what they want. Uh, Congresswoman Grace Meng was supporting this. The community board supported it. The business district supported it. Who are we to say no to this wonderful project? I look forward to, to seeing it built. And I just wanna say congratulations to you, Peter, you did a great job. And thank you to the unions. And thank you to our speaker, Corey Johnson and Jason Goldman for working on this. And also to Francisco Moya, who borders the creek on the other side. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Council Member Koslowitz. Pardon me, Council Member Kozlowicz, your vote, please. Can I just say one more thing? Yes. I know that Claire Schulman is up there smiling down and looking at, at us and clapping because she worked very, very hard on this project. And how do you vote, Council Member Kozlowicz? Absolutely, I. Thank you. Thank you. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. I wanna welcome Council Member Diaz. Uh, I wanna say thank you to Council Member Rivera for leading us toward the repeal of the Walking Mall Trans Law. Council Member Ben Bramer on open culture and our public advocate on the expansion of the Fair Chance Act. Uh, I genuinely respect and appreciate the hard work of Councilmember Ku, Chairs Moya and Salamanca and Speaker Johnson, and of course the fierce organizing of 32BJ and the Hotel Trades Council, uh, which have made the Flushing rezoning meaningfully better than it was and in ways that matter. But I still believe it falls short of the standards of affordable housing, equitable and sustainable development that we should be setting here. Now, to be clear, much of that is to the fault of our too reactive, too piecemeal, too developer-driven land use process. And I hope this project 
will serve as a wake up call to help us fight to change that process. Um, so I vote no on the Flushing rezoning land uses 694 and 695 and accompanying resolutions 1502 and 1503 and I on the rest. Um, and finally, may the Hanukkah lights we kindle tonight remind us of the courage of ancestors and the wonder of miracles and inspire us to fight for the freedom and safety of our people and of all people in these two dark times. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Lander. Councilmember Cootie, did you want to clarify your vote? You're muted, Councilmember Koo. I want to clarify something I uh, bespoke. Um, I want to send my condolences to uh, Councilmember um, MP Samuel. And I said, I used the word get over. I shouldn't use the go over. I should, you should say, she should heal from it. Because of my language and my culture, you know, we, we said get over, but in American culture, you had to heal from something. So uh, council member, uh, MB Samuel, please accept my apology. And I want to welcome the council member, uh, Darman Diaz, uh, the new, our new member. Thank you. Thank you, council member Ku, for the clarification. Yeah. Council member Levin. Um, <clears throat> with congratulations to all my colleagues um, who either have legislation or uh, development projects in this um, uh, in this uh, at the stated meeting, um, I vote aye on all, and I want to I want to offer my condolences as well to Councilmember Alika Amri Samuel and um, and her family on on the passing of your mother, um, uh, from my family to yours, and. Um, uh, Happy birthday to my colleague, Adrian Adams. Um, and no, congratulations no. to my colleague, uh, new colleague, Dharma, Dharma Diaz. My son just arrived right in time. So um, uh, congratulations. And uh, I vote eye on all, and I wish you all a happy holiday season. Thank you. Levine. Uh, thank you with uh, a warm welcome to council member Diaz and again, deepest condolences to council member Amphrey Samuel. Uh, I will be voting aye on all, thank you. Thank you, council member Levine. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Sorry, I'm good. Thank you, majority leader. I just wanna applaud, sorry for the noise in the background, somebody's doing construction. I wanna applaud uh, council member Kuhl, as well as our colleagues who stepped in to support him um, with this fast turnaround with the Flushing project. I'm happy to see that we're securing more jobs for essential workers and hope to get all the details that we need. Um, I will be voting aye on it, but look forward to getting more details. I wanna congratulate council member Diaz, making the Women's Caucus a proud 13, and we look forward to working with you. Congratulations, council member Rivera for your staunch advocacy on the Walking Wild Trans Bill. Welcome back, Alika. Alika, I know that you're going to work hard to live out your mother's legacy, and happy birthday, Adrian Adams. Voting aye on all, thank you. Thank you. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank, Thank you. Uh, hello, colleagues. Uh, I'm here uh, and probably going to vote no on the flush and rezoning and all uh, resolutions. But I wanted to say that what's really important about this conversation are a couple things. One, um, I did reach out to Councilmember Ku's office without much response on some of the things that we were hearing on the ground. Um, and I think that was troubling, not just for me, but some of the community members that just did not get access to us in the city council, especially the local council member. Um, and I find that troubling. There were other elected officials that are against this rezoning. Uh, not just me, uh, and and I think that those are the kind of things that are important in this discussion. I reached out to some of you, my colleagues, I'm not gonna call you out right now, but I will ask us to set a, a precedent that communication happen between us because these rezonings are con controversial and they require us to engage each other. 
Uh, what we must undo is the dangerous precedent of developer deference. And uh, Councilmember Drum referenced our, our op-ed that Jimmy Van Bramer and I wrote, and it was pointing to developer deference. And, and I know that member deference is in many ways dead, thanks to some of the council colleagues here who refuse to support our work in the Sunset Park area. But what we're trying to focus the conversation around is developer deference, and that is what's moving so many of these projects. Uh, so I welcome more conversation, uh, and that's what I'm asking for as we move forward to more controversial things that are on their way. Uh, happy Hanukkah, all, and happy birthday, Adrian. And um, looking forward to working with you, Councilmember Diaz. And I vote aye on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Good afternoon, colleagues. And again, once again, Alika, uh, my condolences on the passing of your mother, phenomenal mother, and an even more phenomenal, as phenomenal public servant. If, if, if anyone has had the opportunity to see uh, Ms. Turner walk through the Brownsville area, she just was a queen and the children and the community loved her and we all loved her and uh, we will miss her certainly. Um, con uh, happy birthday, Adrian! One heck of a birthday party for sure. It, it, it really was a surprise, surprise, surprise. Uh, welcome, Dahmer, although it seems like you've been around forever, that you are now here officially doing the people's work and, and you will kill it. And, and we are here to support you. Obviously, the caucus is here to support you. I'm here to support you and looking forward to working with you. Um, the great Peter Koo, um, great job, man. It, it really was, and, and, and we talk about um, having access and collaborations. And, and, I, and, and I do know that Peter has reached out to most of us in the areas, whatever our particular area of expertise, whether it is land use, whether it is labor or whatever, that we rely upon each other and that we should be here for each other. And I could say that I know that I made myself available for, for him during this process. And, and, and because of this collaboration that happens, not just on this project, but on many projects that our city is, is, is better off be, because of that. And, um, oh, Diana Ayala, happy belated 20th anniversary to you and my guy, uh, East Harlem's favorite couple. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Miller. Moya. Uh, I vote aye on all, and uh, I just wanted to express my condolences as well to uh, Alika and her family um, with your loss of your mother. Uh, I also want to welcome my good friend uh, Dharma uh, Diaz to the council. I know you're going to be a rock star. Thank you so much for all the work that you've been doing. Uh, and to Peter, congratulations uh, on a fight well fought. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Power. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm up. Um, just permission to explain my vote quickly. Permission granted. Thank you. Um, thank you. I, I, I only want to add, I was not going to explain my vote, but I just want to add that um, I, I'm voting aye on all, but I want to just, to the allegation that Councilmember Koo did not communicate clearly, I think is not the experience I had. And I want to just speak up in his favor here because whether you disagree or not, I don't agree with the proposal. He, I talked to him numerous times about issues that came up during it. He communicated very clearly to me, and I feel like that was a very unfair attack on him, whether you disagree with the proposal, to make a comment that he doesn't, I spoke to him when I needed to, he communicated affirmatively. I just wanna you know, speak in his favor here because even if you disagree with the proposal or the process, I think that was an unfair attack on him. And I think he deserves um, uh, uh, sort of an apology for that. Um, I also want to welcome Dharma Diaz to the council. Uh, I want to, uh, get, of course, express my um, condolences again to our, 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 um, our colleague, Ali Gambry Samuel. I know um, how hard the last few weeks have been for you, but you know that all your colleagues are here in support for you and um, anything you need, we're here for you. And of course, I want to wish all my colleagues a happy Hanukkah and to continue to stay safe and healthy. And like I said, I vote aye on all. Thanks.
Thank you so much, Councilmember Powers. Reynoso. Councilmember Reynoso, you may be on mute. Uh, he's logged off at the moment. Uh, Councilmember Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time begins. Thank you. I just want to say, Elite Guy, I miss sitting by you a lot. I'm here if you need anything. Welcome to the council, Dharma Diaz. And what a great birthday present for council member uh, Adrian Adams. Congratulations on your new position as public safety chair. I vote aye. Thank you, council member Rivera. Rodriguez. Rose. Permission to explain my vote. Um, begin. Thank you. Um, I want to vote aye on all. And um, I want to send all my love, prayers, and condolences to, um, to my sister, Alika. Um, it seems like a dark time. And I just want you to know that we're here for you. Um, and to Council Member Diaz, I, I wonder if that sounds great to you, um, Dharma. Um, Council Member Diaz, I want to say welcome. And thank you for adding to our numbers. Uh, we have phenomenal women in the council and um, I'm, I'm glad to welcome you to our ranks. And um, I wanna say to Carlina, thank you so much for this meaningful legislation for our trans community. Um, I wanna say happy anniversary to my girl, Diana. And, um, and I wanna wish a happy uh, Hanukkah to all of my colleagues. And I just want to say it's such an honor to serve in this city council. I've been in three now. It is really an honor to serve in this city council. And to Adrian, I want to say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy, happy, happy. Come on, y'all. Birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, y'all. Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. And that was a real <laughs> surprise. That was Adrian, a good one. <laughs> this is, Adrian, this is proof that. You are the singer in the council. I'm not, and apparently we are not, but happy birthday. And I love you guys. I love you colleagues. Thank you. You made happy my day. Birthday. Thank you so happy much. Birthday. <laughs> yes, I'm still leading the meeting. <laughs> Where's a gavel when you need one? All right. And how do you vote council member Rose? I did say that first, so I vote aye on all. Okay, just want to make sure a lot a lot has happened since you yeah, last. Yeah, year. you're right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rosenthal. Uh, I vote aye on all, and of course, welcome our new council member Diaz. Uh, welcome to the team, and um, of course, happy birthday, sister Adrian Adams. You are a remarkable woman. Welcome to the team, by the way, and the club. Yeah, and um, and and to Council Member Alika Ampre Samuel, uh, when our speaker was talking about that P Brooklyn Pride Parade, uh, he spoke about it perfectly. That I remember the same moment, and um, really have I, I you know how much I admired your mom. And i um, really glad that she was, you two had each other, you know? It was a really good team. All right, so that's it. I vote aye on all. Thank you so much, Councilmember Rosenthal. Salamanca. Aye on all. 
Torres. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Yeah. Um, I'll leak, I'm praying for you. You know, when I, when I, the first time I met your mother, I said to myself, this is where Alika gets her generosity of spirit. She was a sweet soul. And I know that she's so proud of you because you've never forgotten where you come from and you fight for our neighbors in public housing every day. So God bless you. And I'm keeping you in my prayers. And I want to wish um, Adrian a happy birthday. Um, Adrian, I miss sitting next to you because I need someone to laugh at my bad jokes. Uh, you, you, you inflated my sense of confidence. Um, and uh, I want to just commend Peter Koo. You know, he is a consummate gentleman and he was proactive in communicating with me throughout the process. And even when I said to him, I could not support the project without HTC and 32BJ, he was nothing but a gentleman. Um, it's been a pleasure to call him a, a colleague and I wholeheartedly support the project and I vote aye on all. And I wanna congratulate Dharma Diaz. Uh, uh, my staffers, Angel Vasquez and R Ron Jordan speak the world about you. I'm unfortunately, I'm only gonna be your colleague for less than a month, but uh, you, you cannot have a better family than the New York City Council. Thank you, Congre uh, Council Member Torres. Council Member Rodriguez. Aye. Thank you, sir. Traeger. Aye. Uh, Ulrich. With uh, congratulations to Council Member Ku on uh, a very uh, hard fought rezoning, but I know it's gonna uh, be a positive thing for his community for decades to come. I'm voting aye on all with the exception of 1314A. I'm voting no on that bill, but aye on all others. Thank you, Council Member Ulrich. Valone. Happy 25th birthday, Adrian, we all love you. Uh, welcome, Council Member Diaz. We all remember our first meeting. So officially, you are at your first meeting. At least you don't get to have to sing the song in front of us that we all had to sing when we were in chambers. Just let Adrian do that for you. Um, for my vote, I vote aye on all with the exception of land use 694 and 695. I abstain on both of those and their accompanying resolutions. Happy Hanukkah, everyone. And I think we have one more stated before Christmas. So Merry Christmas. Happy Diwali. We have lots of beautiful celebrations of life this month. So God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Rodriguez for clarification. What is or it? No. Did you need to clarify something or no? I'm sorry. No, I is what I. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you very much. Uh, first, and I said this to council member Amprey Samuel before, uh, as someone who's caring for an elderly parent, obviously my heart is with you uh, and uh, uh, your mom and your family. The second, I just wanna say this is very serious work that we're engaged in here and we should strive to not make the decisions we make here personal uh, and keep it professional. Uh, and with that in mind, I just want to say, I did speak to Peter Ku uh, this morning uh, to let him know that I would oppose this project. Uh, and we've had a couple of conversations and uh, he was uh, very respectful uh, and gracious as I explained to him what I'm about to say. I cannot vote for a plan that contains so little affordable housing and contains only an unenforceable promise by the developer to do better by the community within the next three years. The inclusion of labor is very important in this agreement, but let's be clear, had there not been community opposition, had there not been a fierce resistance to this project as proposed, labor would never have been brought into the deal. So let's give credit where credit is due, which is at the community level. And then of course, BJ and HTC working with uh, uh, everyone to make sure that those union jobs were had. But it starts with community. Look, our land use system is broken. It exacerbates the wealth gap. 
and housing insecurity every time we vote for a project like this. This project with approximately 5% of affordable units and not nearly enough community benefits uh, is absolutely unacceptable. I stand in solidarity with the community advocates in Flushing who stand opposed and so I vote no on Time. item 694 Sorry. and 695. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Van Bramer. Jaeger. Thank you. Um, may I be excused to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Time um, begins. Uh, first, uh, simply because he was right before me, I thank uh, Councilman Van Bramer for his words, um, especially the beginning part. Uh, I'm not going to speak about the project, but I will say that um, perhaps we've all been guilty sometimes of personalizing our differences, and uh, me as well. And uh, if that's the case, uh, uh, you know, I shouldn't either, but uh, I do appreciate that this is not the first time I've heard Jimmy Van Bramer say things like that on this floor, and I want to make sure that I. Uh, secondly, um, uh, my new colleague from Brooklyn, who I expect to learn an awful lot from, she's, uh, she's incredible, Councilwoman Diaz, um, is, I'm, I'm just happy that we have another member in Brooklyn to even it out, because, you know, in Brooklyn, we don't have enough, uh, but she's fabulous, she's wonderful, she's smart. Um, and I know I'll learn a lot from her. I already have, and I hope to continue doing that as well. And with that, I vote aye on all, and I'll be speaking uh, during general during uh, general discussion as well. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. Thank you. One moment. Okay, Matteo. I'm voting no on 13-14, I and the rest, uh, and I want to congratulate Councilmember Koo, um, who handled this process, I thought, extremely well and professionally, and always communicated with me throughout the process, and I know you did everything you can to make sure you get the best project for your district, so congratulations, Councilmember Koo. Happy Hanukkah to all my colleagues and everyone celebrating. Uh, my condolences to Alika. I know how hard this is for you and your family, so my thoughts and prayers are with you. And um, I welcome our new council member, council member Diaz. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Council member Cabrera has not signed back on. One moment. Okay, all items on today's general order calendar have a vote of 44 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of the following, land use items 694 and 695 with their accompanying resolutions, have a vote of 39 in the affirmative, five in the negative, one abstention, and introduction 1314A with a vote of 40 in the affirmative, four in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you so much, Billy Martin. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. <clears throat> All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, Council Member Rivera wishes to speak. Okay. Council Member Rivera, you may now begin. Time begins. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for giving me the opportunity to speak briefly on two of my resolutions that we are voting on today that call on the state legislature to repeal New York Penal Law Section 240.37, commonly known as the Walking Wall Trans Ban. 
For years, this law has been used by police officers to arbitrarily single out and arrest people suspected of prostitution and has specifically been used to discriminatorily target Black and Latino trans communities. In my conversations over the last year with advocates and trans New Yorkers, I heard countless stories of police officers going out into the streets to harass and arrest New Yorkers who are out with their friends in their neighborhoods. Their crime? A short skirt, a bra strap showing, tight pants, or simply an Adam's apple. It is unacceptable in 2020 that New York State still permits police to target New Yorkers solely for their gender expression and frankly, their existence. The victims of this law, the majority of whom are arrested in just predominantly five black and brown police precincts can face sexual assault and violence while incarcerated. And even after their release, the consequence of their arrest can have a lasting devastating effect. The walking wall trans ban is one of only two violations in the entire state penal code that can never be sealed, meaning that victims can later be denied public housing, immigration renewals or other benefits. This cannot be allowed to continue. Today's vote will send a clear signal to leaders in Albany that the removal of this section of the state penal code is a top priority for, for New Yorkers across the five boroughs. And I hope that after the deep public reckoning our nation has faced around police brutality and systemic racism this year, the state legislature will act quickly to repeal the walking wall trans ban and ensure that New Yorkers who've been previously prosecuted deserve the chance to seal their records. I just wanna thank all of the advocates in the Walking Wall Trans Ban Coalition who have pushed for this legislation, particularly T.S. Candy, Jared Trujillo of the Legal Aid Society, Brian Romero of GMHC, the entire team at Make the Road and so many others. And I have to thank the whole team at the council, including Jason Goldman, Brenda McKinney, Chloe Rivera, especially my L LGBTQ liaison, Iraq Jahansky, Johnson, of course, and a leader in this movement, council member Drum. Thank you. Please vote aye. Thank you. Are there any other members at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak? No, Madam Majority Leader. <laughs> Madam Majority Leader, I just wanna thank Councilmember Rivera and say these are really important resolutions today that we're passing and I hope our colleagues vote in favor of it. Congratulations, Carlina. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now have a voice vote on today's resolutions. If you wish to vote against or abstain from either of today's resolutions, please notify the Legislative Documents Unit by email. I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Resolution 923 calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign S2253-A654, which will repeal section 240.37 of the New York Penal Law, loitering for the purpose of engaging in a prostitution offense. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. I'm sorry, aye. Any abstentions? Aye. The ayes have it. Resolution 1444-A calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign a bill to amend the criminal procedure law to allow vo violations for loitering for the purpose of engaging in a prostitution offense. Penal law section 240.37 to be sealed and have the law apply retroactively. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All Aye. opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Parliamentarian, are there members who wish to speak? at this time. Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Yeager, Kalos, and Dharma Diaz. Council member Yeager, you may begin. Time begins. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, and thank you to all my colleagues, Mr. Speaker, uh, for your kind wishes uh, in advance of Hanukkah. Uh, I'll just be brief. 
um, I've spoken on the floor about what I'm about to speak about nearly a year ago uh, today. I believe it was the first meeting of this year, uh, long before this new system happened because of everything that's been going on. Um, and it seems like far longer ago than a year. Um, nearly 2,200 years ago, a very small band of Jews decided that uh, the tyranny and the oppression of those who wish to, to wish to obliterate our religion and to end our existence uh, was no longer going to be tolerated. It's a little surprising that we find ourselves 2,200 years nearly later um, with many of the same battles, perhaps not uh, necessarily the same results, but the same battles. Two days ago in my neighborhood in Borough Park, a vehicle stopped at six in the morning at an intersection. Uh, three gentlemen jumped out and chased the young teenage Hasidic boy down the street as he was about to go to yeshiva. Uh, in our community, yeshiva children go at approximately six in the morning. Later that day, I learned that that same car did that six other times throughout the neighborhood that morning. That's just my recitation of one anti-Semitic incident where I got six in the last 48 hours. I spoke about this last year. I'm going to say it again. The obligation on those of us who hold public office and those in the media to watch their words, to watch what they do in our communities, to shine lights on us, lights of division, lights of derision, lights of saying that uh, Jews don't belong here. Um, keeping in mind that the United States is one of very few countries where Jews have not been expelled in our history. And here we are today, and the same thing is happening. And it's over and it's over. Madam President, I'm about I'm to go sorry. over. Continue. Um, uh, in the home of, of, you know, the greatest city in the world, uh, the place where, where we were guaranteed a religious freedom, the place where people in my community and in the Roman Catholic community had to go to, all the way up to the Supreme Court to get that religious freedom back and be given it on Thanksgiving. Um, I, time to say enough is enough, and I sometimes feel that we're not saying that. And I know that there are a number of members here who do very strongly say that. Um, but the reality is that what the language we've seen in government in the last six or eight months, shining a light on my community as not the victims of the coronavirus, but the creators or the spreaders or the perpetrators of the coronavirus. And weeks later, we see it spreading all through. Not a word is said about the religion or the ethnicity of the victims of the coronavirus in other neighborhoods. But when it's Orthodox Jews, it's all over the place. You won't read a single word, and I'm wrapping up now, thank you, Madam President, about the incident I spoke about a few minutes ago in the New York Times. You won't. If it happened to any other ethnicity anywhere else in the city, you would. But you won't because the victims were Orthodox Jews. So again, I wish you all a very happy Hanukkah. I'm grateful for your friendship and for your service and for your kind words to my community. And to those who celebrate, Merry Christmas, happy and a healthy and wonderful 2021. And may God bless you all. And I'm very grateful for your friendship. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. Uh, Council Member Kalos, followed by Council Member Diaz. Now more than ever, New Yorkers are looking for ways to get involved in government. Uh, and local government offers countless opportunities for the public to weigh in on decisions. The problem is even elected officials don't always know uh, when or uh, that they must weigh in on decisions. And if we don't know, how can the average New Yorker know? Uh, there, there's a pretty famous book that I'm a big fan of where uh, a, uh, a, a they, they end up demolishing the earth uh, because they put public notice off at Alpha Centauri and it was on us to have noticed, to, to discover the public notice and hence they were demolishing our planet. Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, if anyone's wondering. Uh, and, so to, and today I'm introducing uh, introduction 2174 to create a civic participation framework to put government on an app in the pockets of everyday New Yorkers. With an open standard, residents could better connect for public participation in local government, whether virtual or in person. And while I think the city record is the most important paper that no one's ever heard of, and I even wrote the law to put it online, we can do better. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, my legislative director, Wilfredo Lopez, uh, Brad Reed, who helped draft the bill, and I urge all of you to sign on so we can change government. 
and put it in uh, people's pockets in a good way. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Kalos. We now have Council Member Diaz. Time begins. Just, can you can just can we come back and just say thank you all? I wasn't sure if you were able to hear me when I said thank you. Thank you for the accolades and definitely being a part of this process has brought me to a better understanding and self-acceptance of why my goal was to be a voice to my community and listening to today's decisions. I know personally I made the right decision to be a part of your process. Again, thank you for the warm welcome and I know the future collaborations I'm gonna have with you all are gonna be rewarding and significant for the 37 Consumatic District. Thank you. Thank you, and it's an honor and a privilege to have you. And again, we are so excited to add to the Women's Caucus, uh, yet another dynamic voice. All I can say is for the rest of the city, watch out, there are more women on the way. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any others that wish to speak at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? Yes, Madam Majority Leader, Council Members Levin and Miller. Council Member Levin, you may begin. It begins. Actually, if, uh, I get passed to Council Member Miller first. I'm sorry, I'm looking for my remarks. Council Member Miller, would you like to begin? Yes, I neglected to say, and I just want to um, ensure that I, I wish all, all of those celebrating a very happy Hanukkah to all of my colleagues, council staff, and to those New Yorkers who are celebrating Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to all. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Levin, have you found your remarks? <laughs> I, ha I have not, Madam Majority Leader, so I I'll have to pass. Thank you very much, but happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, in the meantime, we could recognize Council Member Cornegie, who also, also wishes to speak. Council Member Cornegie. Um, I would like, I would be remiss. Um, I had a long list of uh, thank yous and, and earlier, and I was remiss in not mentioning um, uh, those celebrating Hanukkah. I have a happy Hanukkah, especially in the hoods around Brooklyn. All my uh, uh, Hasidic colleagues and friends uh, in Williamsburg, Borough Park, Crown Heights, uh, happy Hanukkah, enjoy. Thank you, Council Member Cornegie. Are there any other members at this time? Majority Leader, I, I have Love done it. my Here remarks. Thank you. Um, my colleagues, uh, this week, one of our, our neighbors in New York City died on the street, likely due to hypothermia from sleeping in the cold. It is the beginning of December, but um, this was predictable. Um, once the governor ordered the subways to be shut down nightly for cleaning early in the pandemic, um, it, we, it became clear that uh, many New Yorkers would not be able to have the refuge, um, those that are not living, that do not have a home um, from the cold weather. And knowing that many sources of temporary shelter such as libraries, hospital waiting rooms, et cetera, would also not be available um, due to the restrictions put in place to combat the pandemic. The city has done little to prepare alternative solutions. We're all aware of um, the controversy associated with uh, the use of hotels um, to give people experiencing homelessness um, a safe refuge from uh, the pandemic. Um, in the immediate, the governor should reopen the subway for 24 hour service and the city needs to implement a pandemic code blue response. We also need real solutions that include fewer police calls on people experiencing homelessness and more investment in supportive housing. Yesterday, the campaign for New York, New York housing, which is a supportive housing, um, reported that the number of single adults sleeping in shelters is higher than any time in history in New York City with more than 20,000 single adults in shelter every night. We need to immediately prioritize permanent supportive housing development in addition to temporary housing. The General Welfare Committee will be holding a hearing on supportive housing this coming Monday, December 14th. And so I 
encourage you all um, to join us in this hearing so that we can um, so we can shine a light on the city and state's efforts um, to support uh, the truly the most most vulnerable New Yorkers at this most vulnerable time. Thank you. Thank you. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to close and, and continue to echo the sentiments of Council Member Barron um, and lifting up our great honorable, the late great David Dinkins. I just remember in the 1990s as a teenager in Brooklyn, New York, going to Boys and Girls High School to see Nelson Mandela come to Brooklyn, New York after 27 years of being imprisoned and knowing that the Honorable David Dinkins played an instrumental role. He was a global leader. He raised his voice to end apartheid and he was synonymous with ending apartheid, but also the lead up to Nelson Mandela eventually becoming president of South Africa. Here in New York City, he continued to be a leader by shattering those glass ceilings and becoming the first African-American mayor of the city of New York with such projects as expanding and revitalizing Times Square, the Billie Jean Tennis Center, the Safe Street, Safe City program. He built more affordable housing than his successor did in two terms following him. He was a dynamic leader, an incredible role model. And because of him, we are all here in this body. This is one of the most diverse city councils in the entire country. And it is because of him, because we believe that we can dream that much bigger because of his legacy. And it's because of him that we have so many firsts in New York State, such as Attorney General Letitia James, Public Advocate Jamani Williams. We have our first Black African-American borough president and Eric Adams, the first district attorney African-American Ken Thompson, then followed by uh, the great Eric Gonzalez. We have district attorney from the Bronx, Darcel Clark, speaker Carl Hasty, county leader, the Kings County County leader is Ranice Bishot. We have three majority leaders, African-American women, Andrea Stewart Cousins, Crystal People Stokes and myself. We have Congress member Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic conference leader. We have Congress member Yvette Clark, the only African-American woman representing in New York State in the House of Representatives. There are so many firsts and I could go on and on and on. I'm looking at one such as Council member Debbie Rose, first African-American woman elected in the borough of Staten Island. And the list just continues. It's because of Mayor Dinkins that we have a President Barack Obama. He's shattered so many ceilings and caused us to believe that we can be whatever it is that we truly want to be. And we thank you for his courage. Our condolences go out to the entire Dinkins family on the loss of Mayor Dinkins. And as he ref con fondly referred to her as Joyce, as his bride, you are going to be missed. You've set a strong precedent. We love you. And thank you for always coming up to the steps of City Hall, even in your 90s, to fight for the issues that mattered most to everyday New Yorkers. How many of us can say at the age of 90, we will continue this fight, we will continue this struggle, and we will continue to be out here when the people call. Thank you so much. And I will now turn this meeting over to Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. We continue to hold uh, Council Member Amprey Samuel and her family and our thoughts and prayers moving forward. I didn't know it was uh, Council Member Ayala's anniversary, but I love her husband and I love her and I'm really happy for them. And uh, I, the stated meeting of December 10th is hereby adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.